Hey, so what's up? Finishing up a, uh, a workout here in my local gym. And today I want to talk about um, these, this past 20 years living with a clinical diagnosis of depression and bipolar disorder. So, yeah, this whole journey started for me uh, at 12 years old. I super depressed and just not feeling right. My parents could tell there's probably not something right. And at 12 years old, I got wrapped up in a rough group of kids and actually had my first drug overdose at 12. Which is kind of crazy to think now at this point in my life. But yeah, I was 12 years old. I overdosed and uh, honestly just suicidal. I felt paper thin. Um, started getting into self-harm. So I'm um, cutting myself, burning myself and uh, just really mixed up and they didn't know what to do with me and so they checked me into a inpatient psychiatric hospital so I think I stayed in a psychiatric hospital for a week or two two weeks under the you know the premise that I was at harm to myself and other people and then did a couple weeks in an outpatient program at the same hospital and while I was there that's when I got my first diagnosis that I was in fact clinically depressed. So yeah, for nearly half my life, um, starting at 12, I got put uh, on depression and anxiety medication. And then when I was 15, they re-diagnosed me uh, with bipolar, some type of bipolar disorder, and they switched my meds up again. But um, yeah, for I mean, almost half my life, I was taking some kind of psychiatric medication um, once a day, and pretty heavy doses of it too. Um, it's kind of crazy to think, but that was my reality for years and years and years. And so, you know, going through high school and even into um, my young adult years, uh, you know, I didn't really enjoy the fact that I was on the medication, but it, it was all right, you know, I was functioning a little better, and. And I got the depression and and all the crazy mood swing and stuff. Uh, got that under under some type of control. I uh, just put premium in my car, but put regular. Hold on. And so yeah, and I never. I mean, I never really was stoked about it. You know, it wasn't something I ever talked about. Um, a couple of my friends, you know. 7th grade, 6th grade, 8th grade, I think it was 8th grade, they remembered uh, the time that I disappeared for a couple months, you know, a couple months, a couple weeks really. Um, I think some of them kind of got wind of what happened and where I went, but never really, um, never really talked about it, you know. And so I remember a couple different times throughout my later teens, I tried to get off the medication. I just, I hated the fact that I was on it. And so I would just try to take myself off or, you know, muscle up and just do it. I never really was pumped that I was on it. And I always really wanted to get off of them and just be normal, you know. We didn't think much about it. It just became part of my normal life. You know, take the pills and you're good. And and there would be depressed episodes, but I think the medication I was on really just pff, normaled me out, you know. For what it was, it helped. It wasn't until I started getting uh, kind of healthier that I really started reevaluating uh, if I wanted to have to take a pill for the rest of my life just to just to manage, you know. And here's where my mind, here's where, here's where my mind went. I thought, you know, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, um, what did people call what I had? You know, there was no, there was no diagnosis, there was no pills, there, you know, you were just a moody person, or you dealt with, you know, you had a dark side to you or something, so I didn't really know what to think, and, um, but I thought, you know what, what did Mozart, Beethoven, right? This guy with these incredible, catastrophic, you know, mood flares and crashes that that he dealt with like what did what did they what did they call that back then and and um and so i kind of went on a journey um and it was a spiritual one 
I said, well, if God created me, and I believe God did create me um, in his image, then I, I just started thinking, like, if he created me, you know, part of me has to believe that, like, what I experience in my mind, my mental ups and downs, man, maybe this was, this was part of the package, like, of who God wanted me to be, you know? And so I made the decision. I prayed about it, and I felt like, you know what? If, um, and here's also what I thought. If God could make me the first time, uh, if God put me together and fashioned me, uh, if there was something wrong, what if there was a neurological, chemical issue, um, then I had faith that God could fix it, that God could heal it. So um, I don't know if it was a supernatural healing, like the power of the Holy Spirit came and just zapped me and bam, and I got healed of depression. Um, to be honest, it really hasn't felt like that. It's felt like way more of a journey. So I, I took, I had, you know, I had this pill I was taking and I started cut, I cut the pill in half. I cut those halves in half, so I cut them in quarters. And so I started with, um, you know, three quarters of a, of a whole pill a day. And then a couple days later, I, I went to half a pill a day, to a quarter of a pill. And over a course of like two or three weeks, I just, I just quit. And, um, and I went crazy. I mean, I started, I had rashes, all kind of crazy stuff. And so um, that was, that's a whole other experience of, of getting off that stuff. But, um... I remember after being off of the medication for must have been a month or a half, I, I, I felt so alive, so different. Now the, the lows were low and it's been a process of learning to live with, you know, what I call just my personality. I don't, I don't really think of myself as a depressed person, but I am very, very moody. <laughs> Lacey gives me such a hard time about this, but I am so moody. I can go from just the most extroverted, talk your face off, never met a stranger, to like, to this day, I probably have suicidal thoughts probably a couple times a year. Now, that's not to freak anybody out. They're not serious, they're not real, but all of a sudden I'll realize like, man, I'm thinking about taking my own life, you know. I shouldn't be thinking this. I'm a, you know, I'm 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 a pastor, you know, and I I've, I've got my life put together now. Um, but you know what? Instead of freaking out and, and and going crazy, I just feel like it's part of my personality. I I uh, and I've learned to live with it, you know. And I feel like I am able now to experience life the way that like life's meant to be experienced. Um, there's things I do to manage my um, to manage my mind. Um, I go to the gym five to six days a week. You saw me there earlier. That's not just because I want to get sexy and stay sexy. I do put a premium on being sexy. Come on. But the reason I go to the gym like I do is because I found that staying active is the number one thing that helps me with my depression. And I got to get honest with people. When I'm getting depressed and I'm feeling low, I can recognize that's what's going on. And I tell people and I talk to people. I look at my depression now, today, so much differently than I did when I first started learning to live um, in my own skin. And I look at my depression now as a check engine light on the dashboard, you know, of your car. Or like, for this instance, like, in my mind, like, when I realize like that I'm getting super depressed and I realize that, um, man, I don't want to get out of bed, I don't want to do anything, I'm like binging you know, computer games or I'm playing um, all these stupid phone games or I'm just hiding from the world and I'm just, I'm just in that depressive state, I know that there's something wrong in my life and it's a way for me to address it. It's like, uh, it's like you know, working out or like anything else. Like my body, if, you know, if I hurt my elbow, I tweak it, my elbow's gonna hurt, and it's it's my body letting me know, hey, like you need to rest, you need to ice this thing, you need to, you, it's unhealthy. And I know now for my soul that when depression really comes on me strong, there's something in my life that I need to address. Um, and, it's, and it's led me in this path of, of getting healthy and taking responsibility for the health in my life. I think that if I would have stayed on medication um, 
my whole life, I would have missed out on some amazing opportunities to grow spiritually and to grow as a person. I don't even know if I believe in that diagnosis anymore. I've never, you know, said, hey, like, this is who I am. Um, I'm, I'm clinically depressed or I'm bipolar or whatever. Like, ah, my camera died. So I'm just gonna switch to the GoPro and finish this, uh, finish this video out. At this point in my life, like, I've gotta take responsibility for my own mind. I have to take responsibility for my life and the way I feel. And when I feel depressed and I feel totally like, like give up mode, um, it's, it's typically because I'm focusing on things I can't control instead of focusing on the things I know that I have agency over. I can't control how people treat me. I can't control um, a lot of things in my life. I can't control situations. I can't control disaster and, and terrible things happening. But I can control my response. I can control my attitude. I can find things. Even if it's 100 things that are all screwed up, I can find one thing in that list, in that mix, that I can start working on and I can take action steps on. And when I focus on the action steps, typically 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm better. Hope this helps. I hope if you're dealing with um, mental health stuff, um, that you know that it is serious, that it is important. And if you know somebody that's dealing with this stuff, um, share this video with them. Share this video with the world. Like. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it, you know what I mean? I'm tired of seeing people kill themselves. I'm tired of reading about pastors and leaders that kill themselves. Like, I feel like, if anything, people like me, leaders in the church, we should be talking about this stuff, not just kind of making sense of it after it happens. So, um, if you got any questions, leave them in the comment section. Reach out to me, I'd be happy to help. But um, I hope this starts a conversation. It isn't just a video I post. So thanks. See you tomorrow.